In the world of filmmaking, content creation, and overall just cool tools, we have the coveted external monitor. I'm Carl, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Atomos Shinobi 5 inch and the small HD 702 Touch the ones that are right here in front of me. So what makes the difference and why would you pick either of these monitors or one of the other many options out on the market? I've been using Atomos products for the last four or five years now. I had the Shogun Inferno, uh, the Ninja V, and then most recently, this guy right here, the Atomos Shinobi. What can I say about Atomos products? They're great. The internal recording of ProRes 422 makes it really nice if you're looking for something that's easily gradable and uh, easy to work on on many different types of computers. You also have access to ProRes RAW if you have a camera that can shoot ProRes RAW if you're looking for a RAW format to shoot in. They are fairly color accurate out of the box. They're HDR compatible as well. And then my background with small HD stuff is I had the original small HD Focus. It was a micro USB, had like the bar that came out of it. It was a great monitor. It was my very first monitor I ever had. But fast forward to 2023, and we got ourselves the 702 Touch. This guy was on sale from b and I've been eyeing this guy for a long time now. I, I had to, it just made sense. I've been looking for it used. You never find these things used. Uh, I've been looking for deals on it. You never find deals on these once a year, Christmas time. And I just thought, Let's do it. Let's get it. Let's uh, put it in the cart, ship it to me, and let's uh, let's play with it. And I, I'm in love. Uh, I don't see myself ever going back. I'm gonna keep this guy, obviously, because it, it does it does give me a lot of cool tools when it comes to using it on a gimbal. It's smaller. The accuracy of it is awesome. I'll get into those details here in a second. Just to talk about you know the differences between the, the, these two and then all the other products that Atomos and uh, and Small HD make. I'm not gonna on Atomos products in this review either. They're a great monitor. They're inexpensive for what they are, and that's a good thing because a lot of people, they don't need to spend this kind of money on a monitor. You get a different tool set when it comes to small HD products. You get the Page OS, which is huge. I love Page OS because you can really customize each screen. You can customize it to separate cameras, uh, to different tool sets. So if I want you know, one page dedicated just a LUT, I can have I can just swipe over and the LUT is right there. If I want something dedicated to uh, false color, I can just swipe over then swipe back. So instead of going into the menu and trying to find false color or just pressing on it and then it takes up the whole screen, and you can't you can't really use even you can use some multi tools at the same time. My phone use false color and focus peaking, I can do that here. So with the small HD version, I can just swipe over the other side and I've got my, I forget what tool this is. This is my look. So this is my, my LUT I have loaded into it. And then if I swipe over again, I've got focus peaking, swipe over again, false color, uh, you know, got waveforms, vector scopes, things like that on this screen. And then my home page, I've got set up where I've got everything Aspect ratio, if I want to change my aspect ratio, exposure assist, focus assist, audio meters, my look, which is my LUT. So I can change all of that stuff just by, you know, grabbing it and swiping or just pressing over the side. It's not a ton different when it comes to, you know, your usability. When you want to just, you know, change things real fast on the fly or just look at, you know, the monitor directly. But, for speed and accuracy, I do feel I get a bit more out of the small HD. I mean, there's a huge price difference between the two of them, right? $17.99 for this guy, retail. This guy retails for like $280, $299. You can find deals on it usually. And then in the used market, you're looking at like $150, $200 for this monitor. So it, for what it is and the price you get, it does compete. I trust this a little bit more when it comes to the images I've been able to get out of it versus the images I get out of this, just looking at just the screen and not like my settings and, and so on and so forth. Two of the big features that this guy has, the small HD 702 Touch has over the Shinobi and all the other, to my knowledge, Atomos products is horizon leveling. So I've got a little bar here that I can play with. Um, Again, I don't want to drop this. Just got it, I don't want to break it. But I've got a little bar here. You can see at the very top of the monitor, that's a horizon assist. 
and I can make sure that I'm always sitting in that green spot right around there. And that'll make it so I know that I'm, my horizon is, is level, which is a huge asset when you're filming on a monitor and not looking at your you know, screen on your camera. Um, also, if you're using something like a red or if you're using like, like Aerie or something like that, you're not gonna have horizon on those cameras. So to have that built into the actual monitor makes a big difference, it's pretty cool. And the other, the other feature that is huge to me, uh, was such a big deal, I love it, is the fact that I can see this little red line around the monitor, that tells me I'm recording. So if I'm, if I stop recording, that I'm not gonna, obviously I'm recording right now, you can see my image. If I stop recording, that, that goes away. And when I hit record again, it comes back on. Fancy that. And I know that's on the monitor as, as well on the camera, but I like to run my monitor to the side, I run it next to my V-mount battery, and I don't always look at it. And there were some times when I would be running with this monitor over here, uh, the Shinobi, that I would miss a shot because I was not recording. And I didn't know I wasn't recording because I couldn't see the red line or a red dot. And that, that's that's a problem with me and the camera that I'm using. If I had the FX3 or the FX30 or FX6 or a ton of other different types of cameras, you can see the red dot recording and make sure that it's actually going. But it's always nice just to have that extra knowledge that you are actually recording in the moment. It makes a huge difference on set, that, that confidence that you're actually you know completing the task at hand. So those are my two huge features that pretty much, actually they do, make the difference between these two cameras for me specifically in price. I, I love those two features when it comes to this monitor and I would never give those up now that I have them. So another cool feature that we have here is we have the power port built into this guy so I don't have to run an external um, piece like for the Atomos. I'm sure I could, I've never tried that running this on this guy, it probably would work. But you have to run this on the back and then you plug the power cable into this guy and it runs this off of a V-mount battery or uh, something along those lines. Whereas this guy, you can just plug straight in and Bob's your uncle, you're off to the races, you're ready to go. So with this guy, you have an HDMI in, an HDMI out and two SDI ports. One is SDI in and out and the other one is just SDI. So with the Shinobi, you only get one HDMI in, nothing out and uh, no SDI on this guy. The Ninja V, you get HDMI in and out. The seven inch Shinobi does give you HDMI in, HDMI out, SDI in and SDI out. So it's a more robust monitor and uh, definitely worth checking out. I'll put the price right here and uh, you know some of the specs of it. Both of these guys are IPS type LCD screens, 1080 by 1920, 1080 by 1200. Not a huge difference. Maximum brightness. This guy wins out with maximum brightness. You have uh, 1500 nits versus 1000 nits. You can tell a big difference. <laughs> you can see in this in bright light with this guy. This one, obviously you can tell is just a little bit darker. Uh, pixels per inch. This one is where this guy wins out because it's a smaller screen, more compact. You get 447 in, uh, pixels per inch, PPI if you will, versus this guy is 322 PPI. I can't really tell that difference all too much when it comes to viewing it. Color gamut. Here's a big one. Color gamut is huge. You wanna see your image accurately, pretty close to what it's gonna look like on your computer and then what the customer's gonna see on the other end. For me, this was a big one. Color accuracy is becoming a bigger and bigger thing in my, in my productions and making sure that I'm shooting things in the correct white balance when I'm at the location uh, instead of trying to fix it in post. I'm not shooting that raw life, not yet. So that is a huge one for me, is making sure that I'm accurate there. I did have trouble with this, with the Shinobi um, not being super color accurate. Whereas with this guy, you have DCI-P3, so a much larger color gamut when it comes to the small HD product. Does it make a big difference? To me, yes it does. I think that that's a huge one that you should be focusing on is your, your color accuracy on the monitor that you're shooting with. Don't trust the little monitor on the back of the screen and definitely don't trust something that doesn't have a robust color gamut built into it. For monitoring your actual um, exposure and everything, great tool, great tool. But if you're looking at something that you wanna kinda of see what the finished product and more or less is gonna look like, small HD 702 Touch is gonna to do that for you. When it comes to weight and feel of the two, uh, there is a big difference. The 702 Touch is going to be heavier at 18.9 uh, ounces. It's made out of aluminum also, so it's gonna have a little bit more of a robust feel to it. I, uh, 
I, I do like the way it feels. It feels like it can take a beating. The Shinobi comes in at 6.91 ounces and it's made out of polycarbonate, plastic. It has some pretty good scratches on it. It's taken a beating. I've definitely, I've, I've never dropped it, uh, but I have hit it on some things while using it. And it uh, has this cage around it. It's Adam X from Small H, or Small Rig. Yeah, Small Rig, I believe. Pretty robust. I mean, you're not gonna, I, I've thrown this thing around quite a bit and I've uh, had very little issues with it. Some of the other IO on these guys is we have a, um, audio monitoring, you can plug in headphones to the Shinobi, as well as a, uh, you can put an SD card in there for LUTs and such, as well as a remote. I've never used the remote function. For the small HD 702 Touch, you have a uh, port for your headphone jack and then a SD card slot. At the end of the day, you're gonna decide. It's your budget. You're gonna decide what meets that budget and what works for you. If you have the means, if you, are looking for something that you can grow with. And if you want all the tools at the tips of your fingers, the Small HD 702 Touch and other Small HD products with Page OS will give you that. I think that this definitely has stepped up uh, in the last month that I've been using it. My production and my workflow, not substantially, but it gives me an extra tick. It feels better, it works better, it gives me more confidence when I'm on set and I think that it's a, a good overall purchase. Switching over to the Atomo Shinobi, it's done a great job for me. I'm going to continue to use it in functions like this if I want an extra monitor up here and a monitor up there if I want to monitor different things, I can do so with this guy. Uh, again, I think I'm gonna use it a lot when it comes to using it on a gimbal. I'll just have it set up primarily for that. Um, where it's just quick and easy just to throw it on and, and start using it. I'm not gonna get rid of it, if that's what I'm trying to say. But if you have the budget, if you have the means, definitely go with the Small HD 702 Touch. I would recommend it. Um, I'll continue to recommend it, and it hasn't given me any reason not to recommend it to this date. Again, it's only been a month. We'll see down the road. The plan of the future is to purchase a red Komodo and potentially have the Komodo package built into this where I can control it from this where I can't do that with the uh, Atomo Shinobi plus SDI in and out. You kind of need that for the cinema camera world. That's my video on these two awesome feature packed monitors that you really can't go wrong with each one. If you're looking to save some money, go with the Atomo Shinobi. If you're looking to spend some money and get a, uh, a different set of features that are pretty awesome, Definitely recommend the small HD 702 Touch, as well as the Cine 7 and the uh, Indy 7. You can't go wrong with any of those. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this and we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.